All right, everybody, I'm gonna show you some really helpful, I'm not even gonna say tricks, some awesome built-in features in Godot for automatically transitioning your animations without using hardly any code at all. Uh, it's a feature I don't think people use because they don't know it exists. I, I just really don't see people using it much, but it's amazing, and so I'm gonna do a tutorial on it uh, to help you guys out. So we're gonna build a character body controller. I'm gonna build all of it in front of you. If you don't care about that, just skip ahead. So here we go, let's get going. Need a character body 3D. It's going to need a collision shape. It's going to need a capsule. Raise that up to one. We're gonna need a model. I've got my character. This is from a game I'm working on right now. Her name is Alice. It's a Metal Gear style game, so she's all militaried out. Um, and we're going to need a script. So let's use the default character body script. I'm gonna make a tiny adjustment to it here. I want left and right to not strafe my character, so I'm gonna remove this input dir x, replace that with zero. Instead, I'm gonna have that affect my rotation y minus equals uh, input dir, but we should do a dig, dig too rad for that actually. So it's not crazy fast. Um, so that small change will now rotate my character by pushing left and right and not strafe them. Uh, we'll need a camera. Let's go ahead and add a ah, camera node. Um, we're going to make this a simple third-person controller so you can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and get in the camera so we can adjust angles and make sure this looks good. That'll work. Um, let's go ahead and hit play and make sure this is working. We now have forward and backward, left and right, classic PlayStation tank controls. But we're here to animate her. So real quick, let's prep my model. I'm gonna re-import my character, clicking on the skeleton. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you know already about animation retargeting. So I'm gonna add a new bone map. Humanoid, she's already got her bones ready to go, re-importing. Um, I'm gonna quick give my character uh, an animation library. So I'm gonna right-click my model, editable children, animation player, manage animations, load library, and I'm gonna give her a library of animations. If you already have animations on your model, then you're good to go. That was me just using an animation library to give her something to work with. Now for the meat and potatoes. This is what you came here for, is how to use the animation tree to animate and transition without using much code at all, like any code. Uh, here we go, so animation tree. We're gonna need a state machine. Um, we're gonna point this to the animation player. And most importantly, this is right where we, right off the bat, here's what a lot of people don't know is an option. We're gonna change the advanced expression base node to the character body itself. What this means is when I'm setting up the state machine and animations and transitions, I can have it double check information about my character body 3D. And if that information is true, then it will transition for us automatically. So here we go. Let's add some animations. Um, let's quickly drop in something like an idle. So I've got my idle, let's add a run, and let's add a fall, the most basic aspects of a character controller. So I've got a, oh, an idle loop, run loop, and fall loop. Let's, uh, and now let's dive into what I was talking about with making it evaluate for us. If my character is idle, but then they start moving in any direction, I would like them to start looking like they're running. I'd like them to make that transition. So over here, I'm gonna open the advanced section and under expression, I'll do something like if my character body's velocity uh, dot length, so if it's moving in any degree with, of magnitude greater than 0.2, then it should transition. That's all I'm gonna type there. So if the velocity dot length is greater than 0.2, start running and let's give that a, a cross blend of 0.2. Similarly, if I, I'm gonna add another transition and expression here, if I'm going less than or equal to 0.2, I'm going slower than 0.2 of velocity, then transition back to idle. Let's give that a 0.2 crossfade. And just like that, let's hit play. Oh, I forgot, uh, I didn't actually add the connection to start into idle, so now she'll automatically be in idle. If I hit play now, if I start moving with any velocity, she should automatically start running, just like that. Anytime I stop moving, she should stop moving. These transitions are automatic. I didn't have to code anything. Yay. Problem is right now, jumping, that has velocity, um, and it's she doesn't have the, t the fall tied in. So let's tie that in. Let's go to animations here. Um, I want to be where either way, if I'm idle or running and I fall to the ground, I, I get off the ground, I'd like to be in my falling state. So let's quickly set this up. Um, I'll set up a transition here. If uh, is on floor, if I'm on the floor, transition to run. Uh, if I'm on the floor, whoop, 
that I copied is on floor. All right, so that takes care of transitioning back to the floor. And now I just need the opposite for both of these to make her transition to fall. Let me quickly set these crossfades. All right, let me copy. If my character not is on floor, then transition to fall. If my character not is on floor, transition to fall. Point two all around. So there we go. We now have a really basic uh, state machine set up down here. So now if I am moving with any degree of velocity, it should cycle between idle and run. And if I'm off the floor, it should cycle back and forth between falling. Let's give it a test. Here's my character. I can run. And if I jump, I switch to falling just like that. And I didn't have to code anything. <laughs> that, was, that was it. Because uh, the character body already has built-in properties that, if true, like being on the floor, it, uh, that can feed into my animation tree to control cycling those animations. And uh, velocity is also built in because it's all built into the move-in slide functions. So there you go. We didn't have to code anything. The only changes I made in here was so that I could uh, look left and right while I was running around. Um, and the possibilities are essentially infinite. Um, like in my Metal Gear style game like this, uh, I have all these different guns. And so I can do things in that evaluation. I can type something like if inventory dot current gun dot hold type equals rifle or equals pistol or equals whatever, um, and goes to these different animation types, it will automatically transition to appropriately aim and hold that gun in a way that's appropriate for that character. This is a great, great method to cycle through your animations without needing to code anything and to get really specific about what your needs are. And don't forget, you can nest this stuff. We can have an, a state machine in here just for aiming that this connects to. And I could do something like connect over, well, I guess probably shouldn't connect it from there. Uh, let's do it same here. We'll do something like if player is aiming. If aiming is true, then go to this tree. And inside of this tree, we can have every single aim type, something like you know, up at the top, I'm sure, you know, aim pistol, aim rifle, aim TNT, and you just set this up. If I'm, if I'm holding a pistol, transition to pistol. If I'm holding a rifle, rifle, TNT, you just type in here, you know, what you're going to need, inventory, gun, dot type, you know, TNT. And it will know. <laughs> as long as you set up those parameters, it'll know, and it will get there. So hope that helps people out. That's the end of this video. Have a good one, guys.